what's up youtube boxing family it is uh kira out here i'm back at it with another good video for you guys today all right let's get right into it man um we have uh miss uh beautiful uh um ah miss beautiful sinisa estrada going up against tina tiny tina rupert um in a potential wba wbc title unification uh fight and um yeah let's talk about it man um I think this is going to be very interesting. Um, I think that based off of where they are in their careers, um, I think they're going to make a lot of noise uh, for this fight, uh, depending on how it's going to be set up. Because as far as I know with Tina, um, I believe she is independent. She's a free agent, so um, it shouldn't be hard to make the fight. But I think based off of where things are, um, it's definitely going to show some uh, lack of, you know, probably business, you know, um, uh, feasibility as far as like what Tina wants. Because, I mean, if it's going to be a, you know, big title unification fight, then, I mean, I think it's probably best to even go further to try to give more money. Um, so, therefore, you know, Tina and Sinisa Shada, they have just like, you know, like enough money just being made for the fight and it just uh just makes everything better you know what i'm saying like uh that's just how i see it like i think i think it just makes perfect sense to have uh to have it like that and um i think i think this is a very good fight uh not only for you know the boxing fans but i think um where they are in their careers um i think uh they're very successful women um, in their own right, um, Tina, she's obviously the WBC world champion, um, she's 12 and 0, got three knockouts, um, she's pretty much, like, the same with, uh, who's the other girl that fights at 112, I think, actually, no, uh, she fights a flyweight, right, no, not flyweight, um, her name is Dina Thorsland, and she is, um whatchamacallit i think she fights at bantamweight yeah she fights at bantamweight yeah she fights at bantamweight and uh she has a very similar style to dina um not like the best fighter out there but you know she she definitely she definitely has you know you know the same similar aspects with tina um tina is obviously a uh, danish fighter if i'm not mistaken uh, no, I think she's from Germany. Okay, yeah, she she's a German female fighter. Yeah, shout out, yeah, shout out to Germany. Um, they got some decent fighters out there. But yeah, she she's a very lovely fighter. Um, I've watched her uh, a couple times, and um, yeah, you know she can she can box beautifully. Um, I think uh, in her last fight against uh, you know um, Rossio Gaspar, um, probably not an opponent that no one was really calling for but then again the fight at the minimum weight division so there's only like 101 females in the division so it's like uh there's really nobody really there skill wise or talent level wise to even try to say that you know this division is loaded and um like i said like i truly believe that boxing needs a massive weight class um you know weight cut um reform where uh like honestly there should only be eight weight classes and i would even say honestly um for my weight class list that i had proposed in the past um yeah it should definitely start at 135 um i don't see why it can't it's just that i think it's kind of stupid that you know we have to kind of pay all this money going to boxing fights seeing fighters drain all that weight and then you know uh, by time when it comes to them fighting it's like they're not 100 percent healthy because it's like you know they always bring out like the weight cut excuse and they'll always use a lot of these weird you know reasonings to say like oh well i wasn't ready because of you know like the weight cut and how the rehydration was but it's just like if you really think about it it's like uh there's really nothing that i could really say other than just be like okay look like if you are so concerned about weight cutting and how the sport is when it comes to your weight cut um i think it's probably best to cut a lot of these weight classes because you know the thing is is that 
you are struggling to make this weight and i don't think honestly for any man or woman they should be weighing anywhere under 135 plus pounds so when you see a woman weighing 105 it's like number one i don't see no woman coming up to me telling me that she's 105 it, like like nine times out of ten like a average good fit woman would be 130 or 126 like that's the typical weight that you would see out of a female but when you see like women coming in at like 118 115 like i mean like okay yeah yeah like i'm sorry um uh don't get it twisted like there are women out there that are very small and petite women but it's like those are such a small handful of women that are actually small due to their body type of who they are but when you translate that into fighting into a sport like boxing that's a lot different because one you are draining all that all that muscle mass all that tissue that protects your brain and protects you know any part of your body to make sure that you're healthy and fit so you can absorb the punches better uh, because it's like you're not supposed to be hitting somebody continuously in a fight because that's why no doctor will ever tell you that boxing is a very healthy sport but it's just like the risk of injury is a lot higher and the risk of dying from the sport is a lot higher because of you draining to the lower weight classes and there's more evidence shown that the lower weight classes do not provide a any benefit to the fighter like like you know what it really benefits is just let the people th that are running the sport you know in a corruptive manner you know like the sanction bodies you know the promoters that get embedded with them and the state that gets involved to make money out of it so i think either way like if you started at 135 and then you know from my list on it went from 135 to 140 147 154 and then 160 175 cruiserweight at 200 and then heavyweight which would be from 205 or higher or infinity i mean i would try to put like a cap on it for the heavyweight division but then again um i was kind of you know reconsidering that and i mean heavyweights you know will always be heavyweights so i think heavyweight is fine you know like if you need to be bigger at a fight then by all means do it you know that's what heavyweight is there for but i think honestly if the heavyweight division did have a weight cut limit to like 250 um I think I think you would see a lot better heavyweights in action and um it would actually make heavyweights want to work a little bit harder to actually come to a fight more focus and they're not looking all sluggish and really bad on weight because it's like all that extra weight that they're carrying like 50 to 60 plus pounds weighing in at like 300 and something on pounds at a fight it's like <laughs> uh the heavyweight division is not benefiting off of that i mean it benefits out the fans because like you're seeing people you know just knock each other's heads off but it's like it's not it's not doing any justice well, that's basically what i'm saying but for the um for both men and women it would be better if the weight classes got consolidated to eight weight classes starting at 135 and higher but um yeah I, w I would definitely like to see that because i don't think it's kind of fair to even make fans pay for fights that are not even worth watching because i mean uh, uh to the casuals like no one doesn't care about this fight like i will i will be the first one to say that you know if i'm a casual hearing about sanisha estrada i don't think marketability wise no one cares about that and i think if anything top rank if they're going to have this fight set up set up to be on a big big card i would probably say this has to be like a co-main event like i mean if they're going to do something like that because sinisa Estrada, she is you know their second best fighter on the roster next to michaela mayer who isn't even that good herself but it's like i mean either way it's just like you know marketability wise like women's boxing is not good for top rank and I don't even like you know see the same for Dizon. I think I think Dizon is up the same way, but either way, like I mean, there are exceptions. You have Amanda Serrano, and people say Katie Taylor, but I don't think so. But Alicia Baumgartner, she can she could definitely do very well on her own. But I mean, that's about it. I mean, everyone else is just not there. You know, like like if you take all the talent from 
Europe leading over to like the, you know, um, like what the um, Hispanic talent in Central and South America and, you know, um, um, what the Caribbean, like, I don't, I don't, I don't like, um, I don't really see that many women really driving that, like, uh, that much traction out of a marketability standard to even sell any good fights. So that's why, you know, women like Clarissa, um, Amanda Serrano, and those women of that caliber of the very few that, that are actually making women's boxing relevant, that's what's keeping the sport alive for women because, um, female boxing is still not doing good. I mean, uh, despite, you know, having some good, you know, ups and downs, like, I mean, um, women's boxing is, is only holding on to the women that are actually holding it, you know, together. So, I mean, the women are, are still doing good. They're still fighting each other and they're still, you know, trying to increase their paydays higher. And by all means, you know, that's, you know, that's amazing. Like, like, you know, having more women do more, you know, good, you know, high level 50, 50 fights, like that's, what's going to make the sport better. But, um, even, you know, for people like myself, for people that do care about women's boxing, that do want to keep it alive, it's mostly men that keep it alive, but still like for us to still keep it, you know, um, to keep it considerable for anybody talking about it. Um, uh, that's a good step in the right direction. But yeah, um, um, let's talk about this matchup because uh, um, I didn't want to transcend to a different, you know, portion of what I'm talking about. But yeah, Sinisa Estrada versus Tina Rupert. Um, um, I think this is going to be a very. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think I think Sinisa is gonna stop her. Um, I don't I don't see Tina really carrying enough power in the minimum weight division, but I could be wrong because. Tina, she, she is a very good boxer and she definitely knows how to keep herself, you know, responsible at times, but I just don't see how the competition she's been fighting really scales all the way through. And I mean, she has fought some really good names. She fought Anne Sophie, uh, Da Costa. That was a very good fighter back in her, um, heyday. Um, she, she was a French fighter, but not the best fighter, I would say. I, I I think if anything, she fought Tina like way past her prime because she started way back in 2009, and then she didn't really scale until like what 2013, and then when she started to face, you know, some women that no one ever heard of, it's like she she hasn't really fought anybody, you know, um, how should I say, super duper good. And I mean, her fighting Tina, that's definitely coming to the to the end of her career. But Tina, Tina um, had a pretty, um, how should I say, she had a pretty tough fight with her from what I saw in that fight. Um, that's when she won her WBC interim title. And then the most biggest fight out of the entire career of her is beating Yacosta Valle, who is a current minimum weight champion herself, um, her being... Uh, the IBF world uh, minimum weight title holder and the WBO uh, minimum uh, minimum weight title holder. So that's really good. And then she also has like, the 108 titles that through the WBO and the IBF. So I think what she's trying to like, I mean, to, to, to what I'm thinking, I'm thinking what she's trying to do. She's trying to unify uh, between um, Jessica. Uh, well, actually, no. Uh, Kim, Kim Clavel, and I probably say, uh, who, Kim Clavel, and, uh, who's the other chick that holds the WBA, I'm trying to think of her name, uh, Tamara DeMarco, no, 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 hold on, give me a second, okay, correction, so, Jessica Neri is the WBA world champion, um, she just recently beat, um, you know, uh, um, Jessica, uh, Yolanda Bop. Um, she's a really big time veteran and she, she's been in the game for quite a long time, but, uh, yeah, she, she's a 45 veteran who's definitely done a lot for the sport, but, um, yeah, Jessica Bop, she's decent. Um, she, she's had a pretty stacked, you know, resume, not the best resume, but she she she's she's had some really good fights. Um, she's fought some pretty good heavy loaded opposition, and she's done what she had to do. 
Um, she definitely held belts at the lower weight classes for quite some time. But yeah, that was her most recent defeat to Jessica Neri Plata. A uh, very skilled Mexican female fighter. Um, definitely love watching her fight. Um, she she had a split decision win over her in Panama City in Panama. But um, yeah, um, she she's a good uh, um, Mexican female fighter. But she will be unifying January 13th against uh, Kim Clavel. Um, I'm definitely looking forward for that. If uh, Kim Clavel, if she pulls it off against her or jessica beats her i think the winner should definitely face yacasta valle um it only makes sense because you know that the women are going to definitely benefit a lot more larger um i don't think at the lower weight classes but it's going to put more eyes on women's boxing uh definitely the women are definitely putting in a lot of work so i think either way uh that's a very good fight right now to see yacasta valle go up against uh um the winner between jessica neri and Kim Clavel, and then at 105, we have uh, Sinisa Estrada, you know, basically unifying with, um, you know, Tina Rupert. So whoever whoever wins that fight, they'll, um, that should definitely be a fight to be made between um, them and uh, Yakasa Vai. So Yakasa Vai, um, she's in a very good position right now. So she, she basically has a two-way ticket for Undisputed at 105 and 108 so i think i think she um i think she can definitely achieve both weight classes but it's not going to be easy um i think i think you know it's going to be very very difficult because she she has a very tough um how should i say she has a tough style that she has to implement with any style that her opposition will bring so i think with her being at that level it's going to be very difficult to see how she's going to scale and i think you know yakasa vai like she um she's a very lovely fighter um i love you know watching her career and she um she's very very skilled but i think honestly her her toughest opponent will will out of the two or out of any of the four females that will be you know going going up against each other between tina and sinisa and then jessica neri versus kim i would say it's going to be sinisa estrada and then it's probably going to be maybe kim clavel but kim clavel she she is a good fighter don't get it twisted but i think i think boxing wise um it's only a matter of time till somebody does beat her because i do think that she she will she will be she will be exposed to some extent of her lack of you know ring iq and just not being like you know permissive enough you know with her style like she she's not the type of woman to to really try to bang it out with you she she really she really likes to fight on the outside and um she, she uh, she's a very standardized european boxer so i think if jessica neri if she beats her that's going to be a very difficult fight for yakasta but if kim beats jessica it's still going to be a difficult fight but that's a more winnable fight but um yeah you know yakasta Vaya, she she's in a very good spot right now now for this fight i think sinisa will definitely beat tina but it's not going to be easy T tina tina can move um it's only a matter of time of how much she can continue until sinisa hits her to the point where she could actually make it a very difficult fight um for tina and then that will you know determine if that fight is going to be a uh, winnable fight you know between the two women i think sinisa carries a lot more power um she's not a very destructive puncher um obviously in her last fight against jasmine gala Villa, uh, like a, a jasmine gala villarino that just wasn't a fight where she she was really not in her zone and i mean villarino she 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 has a good you know punch resistance for what she does but i think how the fight came came about uh sinisa was just not at that level of being hungry in, in the moment of trying to stop uh, villarino so i think she was trying to get back into it she was trying to regain her bearings and i mean credit to villarino she like she came to fight but she had very limited um experience she she only has like 10 fights now uh that's including the sinisa estrada fight so that was just a fight where she she didn't know where she was going to scale 
at a world title fight and i mean credit to her because she beat she beat judith judith of uh, uh like um i'm sorry her name is um her name is uh judith vinvanco um uh, she beat her to get the wba gold you know uh, minimum weight title so i guess i gave her the golden ticket to fight her but um i mean either way like you know it's a good victory and you know she did like uh, she did what she had to do so i think either way like you know it's good that she got that experience and now it's only like a matter of time to see where um she's gonna be heading into the future but um i think i think sinisa she she's now gained a lot more sharpness in her skill set to actually be ready for for tina um i think i think she has a lot more experience in tina um i don't really see tina really proposing anything different that sinisa hasn't seen um this is a woman that doesn't have half of the like she doesn't have as many fights as, as uh, sinisa so i mean she has a lot more limited experience but the competition is definitely not there um the only good wins that she has is probably the anda uh, the and sophie you know da costa fight and then after that it would be the you, you know the um yakasa vai fight and then uh the kata uh the katia gutierrez fight that's a very good um opponent um she uh she's a very difficult fighter and uh you know she uh she did her thing you know back in her heyday to uh try to try to be some good women but she's came up short um in some fights but she did win the ibf you know uh, minimum weight title back in 2011 until 2012 leading into 2013 i don't i don't know what happened i guess she probably you know got stripped and then she didn't make weight or she probably vacated because she probably couldn't hold on to it at that time but yeah she um she's a good ass fighter you know she's a very um she's a very good fighter she uh she has a lot of you know good skills and i think tina tina like you know with only having 13 fights under her belt um she's definitely garnered a lot of experience fighting some very good opposition but then again uh she she's been fighting mostly in germany uh she she's never gone outside of her comfort zone outside of you know her own country so i think if this is going to be in america knowing that sinisa she's probably is going to be the a side over her um i think this is going to be a lot more pressure on the on the tina than it is to sinisa but i think i think um this is going to be a really good scale fight um until some some something happens in this fight where either fighter gets hurt to the point where they break and i think tina she will show the vulnerabilities more than uh sinisa estrada but um yeah only time will tell so yeah that's pretty much my thoughts um i think sinisa will beat her and if anything yakasa vaya she will be waiting uh you know for the winner out of these two but but either way this is not going to be an easy fight this is going to be a very difficult fight so yeah, much love to both to both of these women. Um, hopefully, we get to see, you know, the best fight, the best more for female boxing. And uh, yeah, you know, it's always gonna be, you know, me coming around, you know, supporting, you know, women's boxing, you know, to the day I die and, you know, forever after. So you know, much love to both of these warriors and happy that they are coming to the table. And uh, yeah, you know, may uh, women's boxing continue uh, to flourish and. Uh, you, you know give us more you know high level you know profile fights so yeah that's pretty much it y'all um i will see you guys later peace out salute to the mighty mighty ldbc and twt and i am out peace